Godot 3.4 has now gone into its second open beta, and here are my favorite features I'm excited for. First up is portal-based occlusion culling. Now this is actually the feature I'm most excited for, and it's really a game changer for many 3D projects out there. And I'll, I'll get into the ones that'll help more versus others later. But just as a really high level explanation of portal based occlusion culling, one way to think about it is the portals are doors or windows, something that would allow you to see into another room. And then rooms are kind of self explanatory. They're one area that the player could be in and not see anything else except through portals. Just as an idea of what you could be rendering using portal-based occlusion culling versus not using them. And using the game Doom, the 2016 version, as an example. Now, in that game, there's a lot of smallish rooms to medium-sized rooms, then hallway, then next room. Now, one of the reasons for this, if they were using portal-based occlusion culling, and I'm, I'm not sure which kind of occlusion culling they're using, they could be using something more fancy than this, but if they are using it, the portals would be the doors, then the rooms would be the hallways and the medium sized rooms. And kind of the idea is you only need to render the current room you're in and the rooms that you can immediately go through using one portal. So a hallway connected to your current room by a door, another room connected to your room by a door, or if there's a window to another room or to an outside area, you'll need to render that as well. Now this is cutting down a ton of rendering because without this, you would potentially be needing to render the whole level that you're in, even if you're five minutes away by in-game walking time. You would also be rendering and playing the animations for all the objects in the scene, even if you're nowhere close to them. So this will be a huge performance benefit, and I am super excited for this feature. I will also have this video linked in the description by The Benny Box, that is a really good explanation on portal-based occlusion culling. So if you want a more detailed video, this creator actually has a game engine series and explains how you can do this in your own game engine. So he's definitely a great resource to use on the topic. So if you are more interested, check them out. Next up for rendering, we have some fixes for depth sorting of transparent textures. Now I'm very excited for this feature because I think I'm currently running into this bug while using the grid map tool to place down the cubes of my terrain. There's occasionally these black lines in between the cubes and I'm really hoping that this fixes my problem. Currently, I'm having to hide the issue by turning on anti-aliasing, and that smooths it out. But it's also going to keep me running on some lower-end devices. So I'm hoping that this fixes it without having to turn that on. This next feature is going to be really great for both level designers as well as artists. So they have been backporting the GLTF module with the Scenic Sorter from Godot 4.0. Now the reason this is going to help out those level designers and the artist is because a level designer can go block out a level in Godot with primitive shapes, you know, cubes, spheres, and pyramids. And they could go block out a level with that and then export that scene and the artist can take it into Blender and make sure that their model scales will be right super easy to replace that block out of the level. One new update for C Sharp users, the Mac OS mono builds are now universal builds with support for both x86 as well as their new M1 chips and the ARM64 architectures. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and ring that bell for news about open source game development tools as well as a devlog about my upcoming tower defense game, Stop the Slimes.